Today, for those of you watching live, hello and welcome. Today's photo moment, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this slider one. Um, I did several videos, a couple videos on this before I left for Mexico right after I got it. There was an unboxing and then I did a little bit more of an explanation of what I'd figured out with it. And I took it to Mexico. It's the first time I've used it. Now, uh, what I want to share with you is some of the clips that I shot while there. And this is just straight off the camera. I just this morning went through hundreds of clips and grabbed a handful of, um, of slider shots. And I want to tell you a few things. First of all, we're going to look at some shots that I did poorly. And I want to show the problems that I had and what I learned. This is the first time I've ever had a slider with it, which I think I mentioned before, much less a motorized slider. But this is the first time I've ever had a slider. And I think that... Um, I think it's a really neat thing to have, but I also think that there is a lot of creative uh, learning that goes into, into using a slider. A lot of initial slider shots that I did were either mistakes because it's just not appropriate for a slider, or I moved it too fast or too slow, or I did other mistakes, and we're gonna look at some of those. But then towards the end, I really felt like I got my stride with it, and I got some shots that I really, really like with it. And I just wanted to share some of those. Now, I also did time-lapse shots with this with the uh, so photographing using the still camera and moving it over time we'll look at those another day because i want to separate those two so today we're just going to focus on the video so just a quick little re-looking at the slider here so there's the edelchrome slider move that back out of the way of the lower third and it is a small little compact dealio you can see for size reference a here's a apple keyboard for those of you using the apple keyboard you can see that it is shorter than the keyboard so this is uh you know it's a nice compact little guy. It's it's weighty, it's hefty, it feels great in your hands, it feels very, very solid. And I had, I would say, almost no problems with this thing on the road. <laughs> one thing I, I will tell you that I did, <laughs> got me one day, was I fire this thing up and it says firmware update required. That was it. I, have I did screenshots and I will be sending a nasty gram to the company for this. There was no way to back out of the firmware update. Fortunately, I had LTE data on my phone where I was, and so the update of however many megs or 100 megs even, who knows, downloaded and updated the device in probably about, I don't know, seven or eight minutes. But if, and fortunately I had the time to wait, but if I had been in a rush, if this was a shot that I needed to set up and go, that would have pissed me off to no end. So that I'm gonna to talk to the company about. It's ridiculous there's not a cancel, skip, do this later button. That's just insanity. Uh, but that's really the only complaint that I had. So let's just take a look at a few shots. Um, let me see here. Let me get to the right window in here. Right before broadcasting, getting everything set up here, trying to find, um, trying to get the shots over to this computer. And my live stream is giving me these error, not errors, but it's just telling me the quality is really, really low. And it turns out because iCloud was syncing files back and forth. And I was like, oh, I could not get it to stop. And finally, I just killed a bunch of stuff and we got it working. But it means I had to move the files over here differently. So now I'm going to remember where I put them. Uh, docu no, not documents. Documents folder. Yeah, I think that's where I put it. Where did I put them? I don't remember now. Great. <laughs> so files are in here somewhere. Crap, where did we? Sliders. There we go. Excellent. So we'll start with, let me make this nice and big, and then I'm going to share this screen here with you. Um, sort by name and get these icons nice and big on here. Oop, not that big. Not that big. There we go. That'll work. And just hide that and hide, no, hide, hide that. All right, let's take a look at the screen. Um, oh, shoot, sorry. I forgot my computer setup. It's not mirroring, shit, not mirroring right now. Ah, sorry. Give you just a moment here. System preferences, monitor, mirror displays, please. There we go, mirroring, mirroring. All right, and is that showing up? That is showing up. All right, now I can get back to this these uh, files. Where's my documents folder and sliders? And let's try this again, shall we? And icon view. Okay, and how funny I've got. <laughs> Just here, look at this. This is insane. There, There's text hiding from Lightroom. You see that hiding there? That's text from Lightroom that has decided to stay on the screen after a resolution switch. Let's just quit Lightroom and see if that goes away. Oh, Lightroom's going to ask if I want to back up. Oh, skip this time. Close that, close that. Here we go. All right, now we're getting somewhere. There's the stuff we want to look at. And I do want you to be able to hear this. So let's see, that is going out there. So, okay, we're going to start with some of the mistakes. So here's, here's a shot. Um, I've labeled this minimal layers. And so often, well, here, let me, before I even get into that, let's, let's talk about this real quick. So one of the things I realized 
And I mean, I kind of I knew this in advance because someone had asked me, uh, "Will this slider, being this short, be good for landscapes?" And I responded, again, not ever having actually used one before. I responded that yes, because if a landscape is truly way off in the distance and there's nothing between you and that landscape, the amount of movement here is going to be very minimal, right? If you move your head side to side and you're looking at something that's 50 miles away or 10 miles away or whatever, that shift is nothing. And if you go all the way from over here to over here, that shift is still virtually nothing unless there's something between you, right? You need parallax. You need a something to see the difference or else the movement is just this one thing moving and you don't see you no know, reference to the background moving. It's just very minimal. So you want to have multiple layers of stuff between the camera and the background so that you really see that motion. And so here, this first shot, uh, I, I labeled it minimal layers. So let me just open this guy up and you'll see here that uh, the only real layer here is the foreground. So there's always going to be a bit of a stutter and a pause before the thing actually starts to move. You'll see the foreground here. And I suppose I should just scrub through. There we go. It's moving. You can see the foreground there. So there's a layer, but it's very minimal, right? So if you were to crop out the foreground, what we're seeing in the background that's moving is virtually nothing. You wouldn't even know this is on a slider except for that little bit in the foreground there. So this is what I would call not a very good use of the slider. Now, let's see. Take a look. at. Oh, by the way, for those of you who are waiting for the microphone test to come up. Uh, we have a first pass edit on that. It's looking great. Got some changes to make. It's still going to be a little while before they, we get that out, but the video is coming together really, really nicely. Okay. So then this one has many, many layers and uh, let's see, just go full and find out where this thing started. So I have this big kind of weed thing in front of it and I was trying to get that out of the way into a good position. So let's play on this. And I think the motion hasn't actually started yet. This might be a really slow one. So you can control the speed. And that's another thing that I learned is that it's easy to have it go too fast. And fa you would think um, the high speed to get to actually see the motion would be good, but sometimes it's just, it's too much. And it just feels too fast. So there was a very, very subtle, slow motion, but with the branches and things in the foreground, you actually saw that, saw that moving, saw that happening. So here's a close up, and this is not an exciting shot by any stretch of the imagination, but this is a very close up of this pillar. This is that same aqueduct arches we were just looking at. And here you'll see quite a bit more motion happening here uh, once it starts. So again, yeah, I'll just scrub through. Oops, come here. scrub, scrub, scrub. There we go. And so now you really see the motion in there. Now, everything I shot, I shot it at 24p just because that's what I'm kind of used to doing. Um, it's funny if I probably should have shot at 30 just to get a few more frames in there, but I didn't, I didn't think of it until I'd already been shooting for a couple days. And um, just because 24 is what I standardize on for this broadcast, that's what all my cameras are set to. Should have thought at 30. And for the slider stuff, you know, you definitely are going to see some of that 24p stutter in there. That's just what you get with 24 frames. It really makes me think that with the GH5 shooting 4K at 60p, how amazing that's going to be for sliders, just super smooth. So I know a lot of people don't like the 60p look, but for smooth motion like that, it's just going to be insane. It's going to be incredible. Okay, so there's that. So there's quite a bit more motion there. Again, going back, you really get that parallax because I have this 3D object. So in this case, it's a three-dimensional object. Um, why a three-dimensional object here that is we're moving around, and so we're really seeing that motion. It's very, very obvious in there. And why is Snagit yelling at me? Just be quiet. Okay, here was an interesting test. So I did a forward push. I thought, let's just try this. So obviously the, the slider doesn't have to just move side to side. It can move forward and backward and you can rotate the camera wherever you like, right? In fact, here, let me just quickly go back to this. Oh, shouldn't you weren't watching the video? I have no idea what the last video you saw was. Um, I'm sure you saw the pillars. If you didn't see the pillars, let me know. I'll switch back to it. But here, I wanted to show you this. But before I do, let's take a look at this camera real quick. I want to show you that, just to remind you, with this rotating head on here, you can have your slider going forward and backward, or you can put it at an angle, and or you just do straight left to right. So you have quite a bit of flexibility in how that works, which is really, really quite cool. Okay, let's go back to the computer. So this is a forward push, and you'll see very quickly that I lost focus because I wasn't trying to do any focus racking. Uh, it was just kind of an experiment and realized, oh yeah, that, that really doesn't work. So there's the push and you know immediately the flower goes out of focus, of course. And so that's not going to work out too well. So then I decided to try, I'll just stop it there. I decided to try doing the same thing and manually focus tracking it, which you're going to see here 
didn't exactly work, but it was a, it was an attempt. And certainly it's the kind of thing that do it over and over again and you'd be able to lock that in. So, so it slipped out of focus and then it's going to slip back in. There we got back to focus and uh, kind of followed for a little while and then lost it again. So, you know, um, it's an experiment. And in right. fact, if you, um, if you look back at an older video, we'll, we'll link to this. I have this, I don't remember what they're called now. I have this video where I, I was reviewing this product that a company sent me. These little handles that it would attach onto the focus rings on the camera. And there was like a big orange one and a big blue one. And that could be very useful for doing a smooth focus pull. And if I was trying to really do this, I would probably want that because trying to do a focus pull like this is is kind of ridiculous. A manual focus pull like this is ridiculous. Now, with that said, too, with automatic focus tracking, again, GH5 should do this fabulously. In theory, I should be able to set that flower as a target and put on focus tracking and then have the camera push and it should maintain it. That's crazy cool. I can't wait to try that. Okay, let's try another video here. Um, okay, <laughs> this is fun. So this guy here is solid, like a brick, right? I mean, this is really solid. If you look at the bottom of this, it's a relatively flat surface. Here, let's switch this over to this camera. It is a flat surface with, you can see those four little tiny feet on there. So you get a little rubber bumper feet on that thing. Um, oh, by the way, before I forget, I want to point out this battery. I never changed it the entire trip. And I, okay, I wasn't shooting this thing all the time, but I use it quite a bit. I never had to change the battery. And I think it got low. I think I saw a um, like 25% or so-ish, but it never actually ran out. Anyway, so this surface uh, is, uh, this bottom is designed to go on a smooth surface. So sometimes though, you're out in a location where you don't have a smooth surface. And often I didn't have the tripod with me. So I would just set it down on the ground. <laughs> it didn't always work if the ground was uneven. Uh, real quick, I got a comment coming in from David. I love your streaming videos. Thank you very much. Uh, just with that bar, it always irritated me. We can find all your links at the description. Keep up the good work and thank you. Oh, you're talking about this bar? That bar is irritating you? Sorry, I, you know, got to promote my stuff somehow. <laughs> I, I probably should take it off when I go to this view. I probably should cut it off there, but I don't right now. It's it's not there. So sorry, buddy. Um, and uh, uh, Real House Films, Sean is asking, could you use the Panasonic app to control focus? Okay, so the app, what he's talking about, there's an app that connects over Wi-Fi so that you can do all kinds of camera controls. You can control focus in the sense that you can touch on the screen on your phone and it's the same as touching on the LCD on the back here and have it focus where you want. You can only do a uh, manual focus control on certain cameras that have a motorized focus. So this lens does not have a motorized focus. There are some lenses. I played with one for a little bit on the uh, Blackmagic cinema, studio camera that I'm using right now that you're looking at right now. I played with it, but because I couldn't control it with a macro, I decided it wasn't worthy. Um, but cameras like the FC1000 and the FC2500 have motorized focus control. So you might be able to motorized focus, motorized zoom. Maybe they don't have motorized focus. Motorized zoom, so obviously it's motorized focus, sorry. Um, yeah, obviously it has motorized focus because that's how it does the autofocus. Motorized zoom is what I was thinking. So sorry, backing up. Doing So could you do a manual slide control with the app? I don't know, but I would say that even if you could, it would be really hard to be accurate. The timing, what you do here isn't instantaneous on here. There is a slight delay. Um, I don't know. I don't know that that would work. I don't think that'd be a good way to do it. Anyway, um, okay, so back to the topic at hand. So this thing, if I set it down on an uneven surface, this camera obviously with the whole head on here weighs a considerable amount. So when if I had an uneven surface, the camera would would rock. And so watch this shot. This is, it's kind of comical. Uh, you'll see, let me get to the beginning of the actual slide. So here I got all kinds of layers in here. So this is cool, right? Good layers, but uh, but watch the camera. Boom. Oh, shit. <laughs> you hear me in the background there. Oh, shit. So <laughs> not, um, not ideal, <laughs> but that happens. So it's one of those things you definitely need to have the, uh, um, you definitely need to have a tripod if you're going to be in any uneven surface. Richard is asking, wouldn't it be easier to have a manual slider? Um, for some things, yeah, probably. With a mechanical slider, or motorized slider, obviously you can have very consistent times. Also, you can have much longer times. I and mean, how long would you really want to hold the slider for if you want to do like a five minute slide or an hour long slide because you're doing the time lapse or whatever it might be. So there are huge advantages to the motorized slider. This is a manual slider. If I take off the motion module, which is 
what are these pieces? The top piece here. No, the bottom piece. I have no idea. All right, the bottom piece, that's where the battery is. So the top piece, I, guess, I think if I remember right when I put it together, there's a little base that goes on there and then it does work completely manually. So you can do that, no problem. But you do, um, you just take it apart to do that. It's not, I can't just take this and manually slide it. So would it be easier to have a manual slider for some things? Probably. Uh, certainly if you're kind of playing with the speed back and forth a little bit, but I don't know, I was playing with it as a new toy and the motorized slider was really, really cool. And it does allow you perfectly consistent speed and you can ramp the speed up and down as I looked at in the, um, in the previous video of this was pretty cool. Royal saying the audio and video is desyncing. I'm assuming you're talking about this. That would be the, uh, that'd be something in YouTube or in the stream. Sorry about that. Uh, all right, so there's that one. So now let's see what was the next file up that I had up. Um, okay, so I was talking about speed earlier and how I, f I realized that sometimes going too fast was too fast. It just, it, it didn't really look good. So here's one that I would consider to be too fast. So let's again, get to where it actually starts sliding. There we go. Okay. So that to me, I think is too fast of a slide. It just it wasn't, oh, well, I was going A to B and now it's going back again. I don't remember why. Um, anyway, so I think that's just too fast. It felt too fast to me. So it was, that was definitely a learning point. I, you would think if you're only gonna have the slider on for the shot on for a few seconds, let's say five seconds of the shot. And you, if you're thinking about the edit in advance, you're, five seconds is a really long time to have any shot on there, unless it's just some crazy beautiful scene. So I'm gonna have it move that entire duration in those five seconds. That can be too fast, which, really starts to make me think about the reason that Edelkron released such a small slider, because obviously they have bigger sliders. In their marketing videos, they point out that most slider, uh, most slides, they only use a small piece of it, and whatever research they did, they concluded that this was an ideal size, and I can completely see and appreciate that now. While having a bigger slider, obviously for some shots, will be an advantage, I can completely see why in editing you would you would end up using just a small piece of it. And even with this size of a slide going at five seconds across, which is a long shot to have, it felt too fast for a lot of shots. So it's, it's interesting, really, really interesting what I uh, what I learned in playing with this. All right, let's see what's next. Um, handheld, okay, so that's this next shot is handheld. This is something I did quite often because this is, you know, I'd walk around like this, not all day, but if we're exploring an area and I knew I want to use the slider and I'm not hauling the tripod as well, I would take this and look for places to set it. But what I found sometimes is I could kind of, it's a bit tough, but kind of get away with hand holding it, maybe get a little brace in there and try and get it to go. Uh, when you do the slide on the app, let's say you're going to do a 10 second slide or something, you can build a delay into it, right? So I could say five second delay, 10 second slide, hit go. That gives me five seconds to get this thing solid. And uh, you know, you're probably going to end up moving a little bit. Obviously it's not as solid as a tripod, but it did work. I was able to do that. And so this shot here is handheld. It might've been on top of a bag or something, but it absolutely was not on a tripod because I know I didn't have a tripod when I was walking around doing these shots. So here we got a shot of this one of the students playing around, getting a shot. So here we go. Oh, that's oh, yeah. gorgeous. Oh. That does that, doesn't it? So nice, simple slide in there. I think a good speed. We have stuff in the foreground. You've got these branches in the foreground, so we see the mov movement. We're kind of moving around her, which is kind of neat. So we're seeing that. So there's obvious slide movement happening in here. Uh, and it was like either handheld or just sitting on my uh, on, on a camera bag, which worked out pretty nicely. Oh, that was kind of cool. Um, Ricardo was asking, have I tried shooting three or more sequential slides and gluing them together in P uh, PPO, post-processing? Uh, no, I haven't. Interesting. Um, you'd have to be really, God, you'd have to be really accurate of where you moved that. Because if it was off at all, it would look bad. I don't know. That sounds like it's more work than it's worth. Although I, you know, try it by all means, but no, to answer your question, I, I have not tried that. Okay. Let's see what's next. Um, okay. Here's another example of something that didn't work out so well. So I talked about having objects, foreground, background, and so on. When the wind is moving the object in the foreground and the camera sliding, it becomes almost nauseating. So that's what this is here. We've got this little, uh, little twig thing in the foreground here. And you can see already how much it's moving. Okay, here we go. Here's the start of the slide. Simple. And see that just, it just didn't work. It's just too much motion, too much happening at once. And so I didn't, didn't like that at all. So that was kind of interesting. Okay, so there's a bunch of, of crappy stuff. Now let's take a look at some good stuff. Like I said, towards the end, I felt like I really got my stride with this thing. And certainly 
when you're setting up the parallax, you're setting up multiple layers of stuff. If you're closer to subjects, it's going to be a lot easier to see. Um, oh, oh, Ricardo's clarifying. He says video bracketing. So you're talking about not side by side, but doing like a, an HDR kind of a thing um, or something like that, I think is what you mean. That I know. Again, I didn't try it, but cool. Great ideas. God, love it. So many neat things you can do out there. Anyway, so I really got my stride towards the end here. And doing closer up stuff was really, really where this thing became fun. Um, I think some of the time lapse that I did, those are more distance, so time lapse over sunsets, and we'll look at those another day, and I think those came out really neat as well. Uh, but you're going to see here that on the last day, we did this whole cooking class thing, super fun. And so I was able to get up really close to the food and the ingredients and the action of what the people were doing, and because we're not in someone's kitchen, like in a restaurant, I don't have to worry about putting a camera in the way, they're set up for us. So everybody is there with their hands in it. So I had no problem putting this camera right on the table, right in front of a bowl of salsa or whatever was being done. And so this, I think I got some really cool shots here that I'm really, really pleased with. So here, let's just take a look at some of these. So, um, and again, I will scrub forward to where it starts moving. So here's a forward, uh, forward push. It untied well. There's a little button in the back. You have more fun. And I think that looked really nice. So again, some of the stuttering in there you're seeing is because of the 24p playback. And uh, that should be the only reason they're stuttering. There might be some playback speed issues off of this computer, but there shouldn't be because it's SSD. So that's probably just 24p stutter in there. Um, something definitely to consider. I would love to be shooting these in 60p and 4k, which I'm sure I will be very soon. Okay, so here's another side slide. Pero seco. Let's see here, you can get to the moving parts. So this works and out And then nicely. they grind that up with the beans and a exactly. chili con chili de árbol. So that I think works out really, really nicely. Yeah, chili de árbol is spicy. See, don't you just wish you were there right now looking at all this? Oh, so much fun. Okay, let's try another one here. What is that sound? God, I think someone's using a leaf blower outside. Wonderful. Uh, okay, here's another, all right, so here's a back. Pull shot. This will be stirred up in a mortar and pestle. Este es un aguacate criollo. Quite a bit slower. This is a, a local type of avocado. Y el resto es aguacate has. And the other ones are has. Has, nice. tenemos todo el año, pero el criollo tenemos dependiendo. We got has. Oh, I love mes. that. Some of these is the first time I've looked at them in full. This is great. Nice. Okay, so that came out really nice. I'm, I'm super thrilled. This, I love this shot. So, um, this is going to be a side slide, a lot of action going here. So I used the long lens, got in tight on there, and uh, and filled the frame with what they were doing. And this is this is pretty cool. Here we go. Let me get this guy out of here. So that's a pretty slow slide. Going pretty slow in here. But I think that works out really nice. And. Again, this is a creative use of sliders that I really, I personally need to get used to and, and find my creative niche with this, but um, it's a slow move. It doesn't have to be this big in your face slide, but there's just enough of that little extra motion in there that just adds another dimension to it. Um, quite literally, because you've got that extra dimension between you. I, I like it, I like it a lot. I think it's fun. This is, I really like that shot. Uh, right, let's see here, what else? I got two more in here. Oh, this is fun, so this is, um, they are rolling the, the masa with this uh, uh, huge, I forget what it's called, uh, kind of like a mortar and pestle, except it's this big slab of essentially granite in the roller in here. And I got a slide started kind of late here. Here we go. So let's check this out. Okay. Aquí vamos a empezar a formar las caritas. Como así. So really nice and slow, shallow depth of field. Okay. Love it. Yeah, that came out nice. I'm happy with that one. Super pretty shot. Okay, and then one more that I saved or set aside for you. All right, this one came out really neat too. Let's see, start the motion. There we okay. go. Like that. Like that. And then this, my friends. Can you start a cooking show? This is like, this is like upper level up right here. Also, note, I noticed that this, this spine it's the spine coming out. It's Eric, that you, that's Eric you hear talking in the back and he's talking about something else not the book the yes. Isn't it nice? Love it. That's I think that comes out really nice. So there you go. What are you talking about? There's a few examples of different slider shots. Uh, like I said, I learned a lot about using them. Really, I felt like a lot of my early stuff is probably throwaway, but really kind of got my stride with it later on. 
getting up close was definitely more dynamic, more interesting than trying to shoot distant stuff. Um, unless it was time lapse, the time lapse distance stuff came up pretty cool. But overall, I'm really, really digging this guy. Uh, like I said, no problems except for that firmware update issue. Uh, to, as um, someone to point out, as Rick Cardillo had pointed out, that uh, perhaps going manual and some things would have been easier. It would mean disassembling. I forget, what do I have to do to disassemble this? Oh, I have to take this part off and then something else off. Anyway, so it's a few steps. It's not like it's an easy click, click and just a part. Um, this this held up really well, the, the tightness of this. Although it's kind of funny because I noticed when I was setting up for today that for the first time, this part here now, there you go, you see it, needs to get tightened. So these guys here need to get tightened and that's this never, I never had an issue while I was using it out there. Boom, so there you see that needs to be tightened, but uh, it has now vibrated itself a little bit loose. And you know, we're, to be fair, we're in some pretty bumpy cars a lot and then obviously flying on the plane, it's not just totally expected. And that's why you carry the little Allen key that it comes with, which um, is somewhere around here. Tighten that up. But otherwise, I'm super impressed with it. I'm loving it, loving it. Love the slider. Can't wait to get more use out of it. And, um, and you know, share that stuff with you. And I will, like I said, I will do a, another one of these specifically on the time-lapse shots. Probably not tomorrow. Um, maybe next week, but I will get to that because I still have to put those together. So we'll uh, we'll do a thing on that. So, so there you go. For those of you that watch live, thank you very much. Always lovely to get your questions in here live. For those of you not watching live, if you have any questions, you know what to do. Just toss them into the comments there. And that's it. We're going to call it a show. And uh, thanks again for watching. See you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>